the best and biggest one we, we've had on that one is all that we share campaign. It's a conversation we want to kind of bring to life. We stopped counting after it reached uh, 400 million views. It's a simple concept. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. And and possibly one of the, the most, you know, award-winning campaign ever made in this country. Mm. Navigating social media can be, well, complicated. Welcome to the Social Media Sucks Podcast from Cupco. Social media. Social media. Social media. Social media. Social media. Really sucks. Where we unpack the latest trends and help remove the suck from social media. Welcome back to the Social Media Sucks Podcast by Cupco. If you ever experienced the fear of missing out when it comes to social media or marketing trends, then this is definitely the right place for you. We help you level up your marketing and business skills by covering the latest topics within social media and through our inspiring guests. But before we start, if you're not already subscribed to our podcast or YouTube channel, this is your chance now because it really helps us get all this inspiration and education out there for more business people and marketers just like yourself. So let's get into today's episode. I have with me our usual guest. CEO of Cubco, Chris hey Coveners. What's up? And then we have the CMO, Jacob, from TV2. Thank you guys for joining in today. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for being here. So, yeah, let's start with uh, let's start with an introduction to, to yourself, Jacob. Your career, who are you, and learnings you had along the way in your uh, in your marketing career. Sure, that's a big that's question. That's a big one. Yeah, it's like, a big one. Yeah. Give us so, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Give us do, you the have, do you have five yeah. hours? Give yeah. us the It's essence. a long form podcast. Yeah. Uh, no, so my name is uh, Jakob Weinreich. Uh, I'm today the CMO of uh, TB2 Denmark, uh, which is the um, one of the two national broadcasters uh, in the country. Uh, state owned, uh, okay. which, uh, which is wonderful in many, many aspects, um, but I'm going to get back to that later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if I if I uh, roll back uh, the dice and and you, you know talk a little bit into my my CV and what has made kind of the the major changes for me along the way, mm. so so possibly where I where I normally start when I talk about my career is actually my 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 you know choice of education. Mm -hmm. uh, so normally uh, my like-minded CMOs would have chosen you know the direct route through the um, the right education mm. courses all the way. Um, I started on Copenhagen Business School uh, many, many years ago uh, on a education which was supposed to be uh, quite a few years uh, mm -hmm. before my master was going to, you know, uh, be be done. Uh, and eventually, what what I did after the first year was that I recall the um, you know the uh, the leader of of that part of the school. He was standing there and and celebrating that the first year was was now done. So, um, and he said, yeah, and, and please, you know, remember that, you know, it takes normally six and a half years for every one of you to get through this, this uh, education because mm. it's one of the harder ones. And uh, yeah, so just be aware of that. Mm. And I remember sitting there, it'd been a wonderful first year. Mm. I loved it to death. I was doing great. And I was like, all right, so that means that all the stuff I've learned for the last 12 months, 10 months in a, mm. in a school year, uh, I'm going to wait, you know, another five and a half years to actually make that work yeah uh, and i need to you know you know make a halt here and say well yeah. is, is this really is really for me right now mm. uh, and i decided to you know walk away yeah drop out. interesting mm. so yeah. um and you know at that time I, I you know i was one of these guys having like three jobs at the same time working and having fun at one of the local cafes and you know all this, you know, innovative, uh, inspirational work, being mm. with people who had energy and, and all that so was, was, yeah, was just the, the way I wanted to, to do it. Mm. Uh, I knew that I was going to go back to school at some stage, but I also knew that for me, the, the right route doing that was mm. to, to do it the, you know, the less regular way yeah. and, and get back later on. Mm. Also knew that I was going to be, you know, doing it that way means that you, you have to be very cautious and very aware of when you do things and what it, it you know, what it takes to achieve things. Uh, because at the same time, I was super ambitious. Um, also at the time of the, you know, of my life, well, I was, all right, this is, I'm likely going to end up being an N NGO guy trying to save the world. Uh, so, so here we go. Mm. Um, so, so I, I took, you know, a shorter education within actually Scandinavian Airlines uh, as, as trainee there, okay. uh, which was a completely not saving the world things, particularly not today when we talk about, you know, <laughs> yeah. climate stuff and everything. Uh, but that was kind of the route I, I undertook, yeah. um, s continued to work many, many different mm. jobs at the same time and had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah. 
Um, and then eventually there was a startup who came in, uh, you know, when I was uh, 24, asking whether I wanted to move to London to become a, a C CEO of this startup. And I was like, yeah, why not? Uh, and, and, yeah. and I knew the, the guys from from early on because I've been working for some of those startups yeah. uh, earlier. Uh, but it was, you know, that was exactly what I was looking for at, at that stage in my life. Mm. So so I moved there and had had a couple of wonderful years. Uh, you know, that was likely to be the best education I ever had. Mm. Um, so so basically Real building life a, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, both moving abroad, doing that, but also at the same time, you know, running a small company. Uh, you know, some of the days uh, I look like I do today, you know, with, hmm. a, with a nice jacket and the rest of the days it was uh, sneakers and, you know, popcorn and that stuff. So, so, um, so I had a few wonderful years there mm. uh, and it kind of shaped uh, what I would call my, my real education yeah. uh, was, was, was that. Mm. Then, I, um, then I had a long spell with, with a, uh, a British company, uh, which was also, uh, you know, built on in innovation mm. uh, within the, basically within the financial markets and the, the gaming markets, mm. uh, which, which had a, a wonderful, uh, you know, trading model, which I ended up, uh, you know, leading the path for in terms of the international rollout. So I, I stayed there for, for 10 years. So mm. basically I spent Wow. most of my 30s uh, yeah. doing that, which was a long time. Yeah. But it was also, you know, another good education in terms of, uh, you know, that came out of an innovation as well. Mm. And and along the way, you know, grow with it and see it develop. Totally mm. spot on. So so basically taking that, which was also flip flops and a great <laughs> office, you know, close to the Thames, uh, but also, you know, working their way up there mm. and, and, you know, just b being with a company which grew from being well, not that many people to a few thousands when I when I decided to quit, and um, and you know a listed business which was completely different to mm. what I entered ten years earlier. Yeah. yeah. So um, so I, th I think you know work wise, uh, it's it's something which which you have to be very aware of mm. that you that you end up in a co company where you where you need to make your mind of what stage is this company in? Is mm. I'm, I'm to, are you in a, in a position where where you feel like you have to grow or are you just happy to you know run things or, mm. or what is it you actually have the so your ambition for. in the company counts as well i think it's yeah. something at least i've also given that a thought mm. because i also knew that that you know without the you know having a master you can't enter all companies because you find some some yeah, conservative changing. businesses it's changing yeah uh, but at least uh, you know 20 years ago it it, it was like that yeah. right? mm. do you so, look at cvs nowadays like with education and be like when you're hiring for your team, uh, I don't look at, I never look at down at on that line. No, uh, I, I see it experience and I see yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's. I'm like you in that sense. Like I don't, I don't know what education anybody has here. No. Like, no. and they could literally lie and be like, yeah, I went to Harvard. Yeah. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good for you. Sure. Sounds. But expensive. have you worked on anything like important yeah. lately? Yeah. And I think that's uh, that's definitely a weird change. But you're right. There are some companies that yeah, they want to know your GPA. They want to know like how well did also you do. Also, it depends what was on industries, score? obviously, and culture. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah, that matters still uh, yeah. in in some industries, obviously. Yeah. What's the most important advice you would give to uh, your pe like uh, people who aspire to be in the position that you are in today? I think I think you know, um, you know, I've, it always worked for me being passion led. So if you're passion led in in the and you want to deal with things where you feel that you got actually energy from going to work every day, mm. you end up being very good. Uh, so, so my best advice is to you know find the things you really burn for, and you you really like going to work for every day. Mm. Eventually, if you do that, uh, you got a, I mean, a much bigger chance of success. You know, you don't have to be super ambitious or everything, but you know, get the best out of it. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, inspirations about uh, aspirations about being CMO in a big company, or anything. But you need to make, you know, look after yourself. Mm. And when you look after yourself, yeah, I mean, you become a better person, you become a better colleague, and you know, you're probably in a good chance to get most of of your every, every day. That's so, nice. um, so that's the thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I, I, you know, closed my my master during that tenure with uh, the British company um, back in, in, you know. So you're educating yourself on the side. Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. So, so, so that's you know, it's a tough route to go. Uh, I knew that I wanted to get back and you know close that gap uh, yeah. because it it could prove uh, you know good for me. Yeah. That, that was you know it ended up being good fun. 
because at that time when you have you know 10 years experience from 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 working mm. uh, there's some of these uh, theories which actually start to make sense uh, so, <laughs> oh, okay. you, so you can actually use that and say all right like, so wait a second uh, that actually is the way it is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so some of that was actually makes sense so you were taking your masters in the evening essentially working during the day that must have been exhausting yeah, I mean, there are two ways of doing your MBA. So you either do it, you know, 12 months full time and you were, you get a leave from work or you go the hard route, which is to take, you know, two and a half years and you use your evenings and weekends yeah. and doing mm-hmm. that. And yeah. eventually that was what I ended up doing. He did that in London? Or uh, no, that actually, I, I had my, my, my London uh, job, but I yeah. did it on, on Copenhagen Business School. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Good job. Hard time. Impressive. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing. Your uh, all the all the adventure you all the old on. stories, yeah, yeah. But then, how do you get from there to TV two? To TV two, yeah. yeah. So, so I had a spell. Uh, actually, I came out of that ten year spell with with a British company. Uh, still having, you know, this entrepreneur thing around me, and and I wanted to do stuff, and so I went on my own for a few years. Mm. Oh, yeah. uh, started to, you know, consult. Yeah, you know, try to do these things you've been thinking about. All right, if I ever get my own business, this is what I want to try and do. Mm. So I started uh, with some other guys doing uh, apps, yeah. uh, mm. you know, working in that space for, for a few years uh, and obviously realizing when you're around 40 and you have, a f- you know, three kids and a wife, <laughs> you need to, you know, find out what if you really want to do uh Work move back talent. into uh, well also <laughs> that but also life. move into a studio and yeah. you know yeah. put all your money into that business or you want to have a noodles all the time <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> and, and the kids uh, might be a little upset with that every day yeah <laughs> and and we were basically okay. at in a situation where we had a great product but we had to go for another seating round and yeah. i decided to call it a day yeah okay it's so, so much work i've been in also in the startup game and it's just it's a it's, you spend half your time finance and half your time building the product yeah exactly it's like okay how so. do we yeah, how do we scale up and yeah. you know, how do we get this thing going so that we don't have to work as hard as we are? But, yeah. but you're right, it's it's a tough game. It's yeah. kind of a young man's game in my oh, mind. Oh, it is. Uh, you guys you are know, young. What's oh, age we is, are. Age we is are. just a number, no? <laughs> I don't feel young. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is like empty yeah. <laughs> in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but you also have to balance it out. So it creates yeah. a lot of energy, right? Yeah. So, so and that is really what I was after at, at that time. Yeah. Um, I'm still after that, right? But uh, but it's in, in under different circumstances now. Mm, yeah, okay. So at at that time, uh, the job uh, at TV Two came super handy. So that was in uh, you know seven years ago. Uh, I had no experience at all with with the TV industry. Uh, yeah. Streaming was was just about starting there. Mm. Uh, and um, yeah, so so one of my good friends said, "Hey, uh, why don't you look at this one?" And uh, I started having the the conversations, and then yeah. it. No, there we go. Well, while yeah. you're running those businesses, like, did you gravitate towards the more marketing stuff? Because as I understand, you were kind of the CEO or like maybe the operatings persons. Like, yeah. was were you more in tune with the marketing side, like how to get a product out there, how to communicate about it? Was that what gravitated you towards those things? Like, because yeah, I think you've done better than me on this okay. one, Chris. So, so I mean, you ended up in a where you are now with a lot of different, you know. <laughs> people doing different stuff. I mean, it was a small business, so yeah. so it was kind of like the, the GM for that, running it and, and trying to do everything at the same time right. from product to, you know. Wearing many hats. R- yeah. r- you know, building the products, uh, doing the marketing, talking to investors, uh, you know, talking to the people we had involved around it. So it's kind of, you know, all hands. Yeah, okay. uh, what were kind of mine for, for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, you know, it, it's also what creates the energy that you kind of, you know, yeah. try to you dabble in each area and you know a little exactly. bit about everything. So you're kind of a generalist yeah. when you come out of it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, because you've got an interesting path to being a CMO. Like it's it's an untraditional path because like you said at the beginning, I mean, many people would just go study marketing. Uh-huh. Mm. They would get a junior level job in either an advertising agency or in a brand mm. and they would work their way up, up the ladder. Yeah. Whereas you I don't, like it's fascinating to me how you ended up in the position you're in because it's so different um, and I think it's it's important for people to learn about this message because or learn about your story because you don't always have to take that traditional route no. to get to where you want to go and I think probably your entrepreneurial mindset probably like your ability to run many different things probably your ability to have a business mindset mm. is what was attractive to TV2 and it's attractive yeah. to many businesses yeah. because mm. it's not just Oh, you, this is a marketing person with a marketing background yeah, yeah. that can come in with maybe traditional marketing ideas. Mm. 
you come with a totally different set of tools yeah. and sort of outlooks. And I think it's very interesting. It's um, a good synergy to have in the mix in there. So you both understand the business side and the marketing side. Yeah. You know, I, I think um, I, I think I think the CMO role has changed over the last few years where, you know, if you look back 18 years ago, it was fine for for a CMO to, you know, understand all the marketing game, all the skill sets within that, all the disciplines. And, you mm -hmm. know, you delivered your stuff to the business and, you know, you went on doing your new campaigns. Uh, I think it's changing. Yeah. Uh, I think it's changing. So so um, so for me, one of the big things has also, you know, talking to my team has been we need to understand the total business here. We, we can't just allow ourselves to, you know, sit in the corner doing great creative work. Yeah. We need to say, all right, so does it actually work? Mm. Uh, what kind of a value does it deliver to the business? Mm. Uh, so it's fine to, ha you know, walk around with uh, funny hats and, you know, have great parties, but we need to kind of show that we generate value for the business. Yeah. Mm. Totally agree. Yeah. And, and unless you kind of uh, are able to frame that, uh, I think I think you will be limited in your, in, you know, the, the potential you have for success in, yeah. in a new CMO role. Yeah, I, so, totally, I totally buy that. I think it's such a good insight that it has changed so dramatically much and it's been you know you're right it has been more of a creative role and now it's like you really have to be able to talk with the board of directors and understand finance and understand yeah. product delivery and understand sort of technology and where is that mm -hmm. going it's it's a much bigger role than it was 10 15 20 years ago yeah, agree. And, and it's a it's a totally uh, it's interesting to see but you're still an anomaly which i think is weird like i think you're pointing a, a good finger on it. A lot of brands have not taken that step to saying, okay, this person that we bring in, maybe they should be a more of a business person or mm. sort of a entrepreneurial person. So it's coming, but I do think it's maybe slow. Yeah, mm. um, I agree. And that's why maybe you have churn on the CMO side every two years yeah. in the industry because brands are searching for that CMO like you, yeah. and there's not a lot out there. There's no. there's very few. so. Um, let's see where it goes, but I think, you know, it's coming, but mm. it's slow, I think. Yeah. 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 Right. Good insights. Yeah. Mm. Can you tell, can you introduce our audience, both the local and the global ones about TV2 where you are right now? Yes, of course I can. So, so, um, so TV2 is state owned. Mm. So we obviously got, uh, you know, two kind of businesses within the businesses, mm. which is the, uh, traditional flow TV, which we all remember with the you know, old remote sitting on the couch watching TV and just, you know, press a button and you just see this, you sit there for Whatever hours. comes on. Yeah, it's what your parents used to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's yeah, what I don't even know own a TV. I know yeah. you haven't yeah. seen it. You probably read about it it's in books. It's a big black box, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard about I, it? I hear old people tell yeah. me about yes. TVs. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, sometimes way back, we had yeah. to go up to the TV <laughs> yeah. and exactly. change. You know, like how you now click a button and it changes to a different YouTube channel? Yeah. We had to go up to the TV. Yeah. My yeah. dad does that when I'm home and the TV is not working. Like, what's yeah. happening here? Yeah. Like, my Chrome isn't yeah. casting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my Chrome isn't casting. <laughs> yeah. We did that with the bunny ears. Yeah. That was. Yeah. What's wrong with my Chrome? It's not casting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Carry on. Sorry about that. Yeah. So I had that, to make fun of the Gen Z person. Yeah. I'm not Gen Z. I'm yeah. 27. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's that's like the <laughs> traditional part of the uh, of the business. Then we got the whole streaming uh, adventure coming on. Yeah. Uh, which is obviously where you know everything is heading in that direction, and yeah. we are kind of slowly, you know, not pushing people from Flow T from Flow TV to to the streaming services, but we are, you know, nudging it so we keep them and re retain them within the uh, within the system. Mm. Uh, but it, it's it's going in that direction, right? So um, so that's that's kind of the uh, of the business model for us that we we you know make probably sixty percent of our money in the in the flow. Uh, department and mm. we we kind of make the rest in the in the digital. Okay, that's interesting. so uh, yeah, so yeah. that is uh, so people subscribe for the TV two. Yeah, exactly. Like, digital versions. I know I've done it. I right? have it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I must admit, like I do it at Christmas time and then I cancel it's it fine. because it's fine. I really want we it. like you anyway. <laughs> yeah, we, we like to, you know. In Denmark, here for those of you listening internationally, there is Christmas calendar yes. shows that ah. like basically dominate the airwaves on Christmas time <laughs> and it's usually really good pre-produced series that just runs every single night for the full 24 nights yeah. of Christmas. Yeah. And it's an addiction. 
I'm working on it, but Isn't it's it mostly for kids. It's no, it's mostly <laughs> for <laughs> anybody. In it. <laughs> it's joking. No, it's mostly for kids. It's for, it's really for my kids, but it's why I sign up for every single streaming or you know, yeah. Flow TV streaming service because they've got these great yeah. Christmas shows on. Yeah. So mm. yeah, you get me for a month. Yeah, and then good. I'm gone. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess that that is like something you guys have probably seen that people's like subscriptions maybe in and out depending on what you guys have for programming and exactly yeah. so so it's like uh, the new nature of of our everyday right mm. so so normally if you had like the flow tv you you wouldn't give it up yeah. uh that was just the way it was where we kind of you know get used to all right we have a lot of contact with the danes but it's also a contact yeah. which can stop for a few minutes and mm. then they may come back for the football world cup or tour de france or mm. yeah. a series or something but but it's a it's a behavior which is you know the same with us as it is for HBO, as it is for, mm. for Netflix. Yeah. So it's just the name of the new game for us. Yeah. yeah. Is it weird to compete on a national or a global level with those platforms? Because mm. you guys didn't have to do that ten years ago. What's you know? How does that change your guys' mindset? How does that change the business? Well, it's 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 changing the business, I would say, right? But it, it's it's a massive culture um, difference. Mm -hmm. from where we came from i recall when, when i came in you know I've, I've i hadn't done a lot of work in denmark uh mostly been dealing with international markets for for many many years when yeah. i started at tv2 uh, or before um and i i came in i thought all right this is you know it's a market leader back here so it's great it's fine and but you know what we were still looking at the other uh you know state-owned business and mm -hmm. saying all right so uh, we need to compete with them Mm -hmm. So we want to be bigger than them. We know, wanted to get the most share of, of the viewing. We want to win Friday night, eight o'clock, that entertainment show. We mm -hmm. want to beat them. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of where we came from in 2015. Say, so, well, this is this, that's a big battle. Mm -hmm. um, I came from a total different thing, right? Saying, all right, so, uh, you know, there's somebody already eating our lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just not watching it yeah. uh, because that's Netflix. And they've been here for a few years, but it's not a super big market, but it's flying. So obviously with, you know, such a low barrier to entry, um, because basically you can put your content out uh, across the world. The Danes speak perfectly English, most of them. Mm. So it's easy. I mean, we're easy target here and yeah. we are we are one of the, you know, mature markets for many, many industries because the Nordic region is, you know, uh, you know, Wolfie. first runner. Yeah. You got money. Yeah. You got, you know, uh, you know, at the time where I said, all right, so who, how many's got computers in the home, etc. Yeah. Uh, we are there, so uh, so we had to kind of step up that game. So, mm -hmm. so I came a kind of with a mindset saying, you know, I don't, I'm not too bothered about Friday night. I'm mostly bothered about whether within the area I sit with, we could compete in a few years with, mm. uh, you know, with the guys from Netflix yeah, and with so HBO. So well, yeah. because that is eventually where the battle is going to be. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I perfectly remember those conversations back in the days, and I said, look, uh, and I said to them, which was possibly also a little bit unusual for TV2 saying, well, you know what? I think we should start up, you know, aiming for within marketing and branding to be the best in Europe. Uh -huh. And everybody an just became mm -hmm. totally quiet and say, well, Europe, I yeah. mean, uh, can we just, you know, saying we want to be the best in Denmark, so mm -hmm. why Europe? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. you know what? I mean, the guys we compete with, it's not eight o'clock Friday night mm -hmm. and the other state owned thing. Yeah. Um, it is really the guys who they don't have offices here because they don't have to. Mm. So they are out of Amsterdam, they are out of LA, they are out of you know branches across Europe, they're out of London, and that is eventually where we're gonna uh, you know benchmark our work towards. Mm. Um, and you know it took a while <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah. to, to kind of get the the foot under under that vision. Yeah, uh, we, we made it. So right, so so we uh, you know have done it a few times in uh, in Europe to mm. you know be nominated and won you know. For, for work there and best team. We won the global one with uh, head of CNN last year. So we have, we have you know, won all, all the t-shirts, mm. but uh, but we're also in a, in a trade and industry, it's just so fast moving. So mm. we need to, to keep moving with yeah. it. I'm yeah. thinking streaming has really disrupted the whole market here um, in, in the world and obviously also for Flow TV. Yeah. How has TV2 kind of had to change its self-perception uh, in this digital transformation? Well, we're doing an incredibly great job when it comes to flow. 
Yeah. So so and and it's uh you know it's wonderful because it still brings in great money obviously, mm. but it's also one of the things holding our back uh hold, holding us back in 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 some other areas, because okay. um because when you do so well and right now we are you know, uh, possibly around you know fifty percent of the viewing in Denmark on Flow uh, is with us, mm. uh, you kind of stick to that as well. Mm. So and we're always going to do that. Uh, it's it's we 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 can't you know let go. But it's also holding our back in terms of you know how fast do we have to move mm. uh, to kind of, of be super attractive and you know uh, and deserve you know the uh, subscriptions from Danes when it comes to TV to play, which mm. is a streaming platform. So um, so we're doing wonderful there, uh, and you know when it comes to the pace in the business, we, we're getting there. But it's taking us a little bit longer to kind of of you know get our act together because we've done so well and we've possibly had two great editors and you know uh, people working with the content uh, so it's been flying on, on flow mm. um, it still does but we've kind of we know and we can see that the that the money is changing that that people are unplugging from the uh, the normal b2 b2b distributors mm. and going straight to to us uh, yeah which is which is new of course, yeah. But your audience then, how do they adapt to uh, using social? How do you actually speak to the community and your subscribers via social media? That has changed a lot, yeah. right? So so, uh, so when I came in, in 2015, there was a lot of great groundwork being made by, by very good people. Um, it was at that time where you had Facebook, right? And mm. you could actually, with uh, you know a great series on TV, you could attract you know hundreds of thousands of followers uh, you know basically buying just chopping up that uh, the program and and putting it uh, on on, in, on into social, your feed yeah, yeah. so um, so that was easy and we, you know we had so many contacts cheap organic contacts just by publishing our stuff in there mm. uh, and then you know the story uh, possibly better than I do around all right you got new uh, you know platforms coming up uh, and and Organic Maybe. reach is going down. And oh my God! So yeah. so uh, so <laughs> from where we just saw, all right. So we got a you know we reached a million people. You know, twenty yeah. percent of the population by with many just of our posts. Content, yeah. it, it, it was easy. Yeah. Uh, we just saw you know year by year, you know, numbers Dropping coming down, down yeah. coming yeah. down. Reach but getting capped. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was incredible to see, and it, you know, it's been done in a way. Everybody has been talking about uh, you know algorithms for years. Mm. And I just have to, you know, it's just hats off for, for these guys dealing with it because it's not been like from one day to another because we've been sitting there working it. Mm. And at the same time, we're saying, all right, numbers are coming down on the organic. We need to put a little bit more money be, mm. you know, behind the paid. And today it's like, you know, uh, probably 90% of the contacts we make uh, will be through paid mm. uh, paid uh, social. Yeah. So, so, um, so the way you work with it mm. uh, has changed. So yeah. so basically, it was almost just Flow TV mm. back in 2015 because you just public stuff and you know so many Danes on on on, on Facebook still, mm. uh, and uh, it's just different today. It's a different landscape, definitely. Yeah. How do you use all that data you guys collect? Because I imagine you would have so much from both the Flow side, subscribers, and you know on the social side. How do you use that data for yourself? Well, it, it, it's a little bit different, right? Because uh, where we started up in 2015, having just possibly one platform to kind of work with, and we, we've done great on, on Facebook for obvious reasons, mm. uh, it's a bit more complicated today. So if you sit today and, and you know, the team we, we have working it, they spend a lot of time obviously with Instagram, Snapchat, still doing Facebook, mm. uh, arguably is YouTube a social channel, I'm not sure, we call it a platform, uh, and TikTok. Mm. So, uh, it's different from you know from platform to platform how you deal with with the data. Of course. Uh, so uh, so uh, but but what what we can do is obviously to you know it it becomes a little bit easier when it it's when you're into the digital money game. So mm -hmm. you can actually if you can follow your 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 content through and see what's actually converting. Yeah. Uh, then then you can you know work those channels harder, right? Um, they. It's easier for us to deal with, uh, you know, all the data on on the digital side than it's been for the first twenty five years for TV two working flow uh, TV contacts because you basically don't know who sits exactly behind the screen. Mm. Right. Whereas for us, it's kind of a you know, I mean, a blessing 
yeah. to, to see, all right, we actually know who they are. We know that if we have youth content, we, you know, we use these channels, we can, you know, mm. cap that to these people. Um, and then you can track clicks and signups if you're you know, all the all the, all the all the classic yeah. stuff, which is uh, to be honest, not super hard, but oh. you still have to pay a lot of attention to it, right? Yeah. So especially um, now it's a little muddy with you know cookie policies and things like that that are kind of yeah and and non tracking like it gets a little bit dirty. But I think you're right. I mean, it is still better than we don't know who this person is that signed up for Flow TV because no. you know, well we do know, but you don't necessarily have what triggered that you don't know like what you know was it the programming was it the offer exactly like you don't know right with this you have a little bit more data at least to figure that out and from which platform like yeah exactly. is that billboard working i don't fucking no. know but i know that this TikTok is yeah and that makes it you know much easier to spend your money and follow the money like you said right yeah, mm. and, and also the fact that we we still have super uh, traction still with Flow TV. Mm. Yeah. So, so so you know there's still a million Danes sitting there Friday night watching these shows, yeah. right? So so thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, many 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 uh, you know uh, age groups which they don't sit there. So mm. we we would love to see them watching you know uh, strictly come dancing with their parents, but they don't. No. So so uh, you know we need to find. Uh, you, I mean, if we want to continue to be relevant for the Danes. We need to obviously grab these age groups and say, mm. well, where can we find them? Uh, that's one thing, but also which content do actually apply to them? Yeah. So one thing is finding them. The 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 harder one may actually be all right. So if we have, you know, kind of old TV channels, uh, it's not what one program which is going to make them a you know a regular mm. subscriber for TV two play. We need to have a constant offering for them. Yeah, it's always changing, right? Like, yeah, it's what's old, the hottest latest thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Dude. not always like. The bread and butter it's always like what's new yeah what's exciting what's coming up that really is what's driving their yeah support or driving them staying at least yeah because it is easy to turn it off and exactly on. Yeah. so it's it's a bit tough i mean i gotta say like as a content provider ourselves and content creator it's like nobody's sitting here going i want less content no. everyone's saying we want more content <laughs> yeah. relevant content yeah. relevant yeah. content yeah. and like and uh, I mean, Netflix has all the money and the data in the world. You also have all the money, in, well, not all the money, but you have enough money and enough data. Even that won't save you from not having a piece of content be great. No. Like, you, sometimes you don't know. No. You think it's amazing. You've got a great script. We've got a good yeah. acting cast. We've got a good director. We've mm. got a good team. Put it out, and it's like nobody's watching. Mm. And you, that's why they have pilots. Like, yeah. You just don't know no. until you push publish no. and that's hard i think like uh, for brands and like you said like you got to keep them loyal then you got to keep programming you got to keep content going mm. and making you know hopefully lucky but smart moves yeah mm. at the same time it's it's yeah. tough mm. it's a tough game but the data is you know creating us it's, it's giving us a chance to say well from you know from 15 years of age and up to 30 it's it's a super super important age group for mm. us because they don't watch flow tv anymore mm -mm. so so we can say all right we got these shows that may be attractive for them or these series or these sports rights mm. uh, and you know we can find them out here yeah so that is where the data comes hand in hand with uh, you know social platforms mm. uh, and we, we spend more you know energy there than we have done for well until now yeah yeah first 33 years yeah because you guys are going through a change like you're not i mean there was something wrong with being a television or a media group but now you're a technology company mm. and that's that's probably been very different and very like how do you s transition from being a media company to a technology company now technology companies are trying to be media companies yeah. so everyone's <laughs> going like they're <laughs> everyone's like what the hell am i today let's yeah. find out but i think like that's that must be wild to be inside of TV to going through that transition to being a tech company. Yeah. Um, has it been full blown? Like you guys buying, you know, hiring developers and data scientists and has that been like what you guys are up to? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's been pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, because it's also a company which is, you know, uh, we got a, a public service, uh, you know, job to do. So we yeah. create news yeah. and, and a, a lot of, uh, you know, talk internally and externally about TV2 is that we we are just a news company so we mm. are one of our big jobs is to provide uh, you know news for the Danes and tell them about what's going on in you know in Denmark and outside Denmark mm. so it, it's a huge job so that's a big thing of the identity yeah 
Uh, so if you if you're kind of publisher in, in that way and you you love being that because you don't find anyone in, in TV2 not loving that aspect of, yeah. of the business, mm-hmm. uh, it takes a lot of time to kind of all right. So what does that mean to become a, a technology company at the same time? Mm. And can mm. you be both? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and you know I think we have to realize that that we are both uh, mm. because we have to you know s- stay close to our you know heritage and and what we where we come from mm. but we also have to kind of follow the vision or at the future at least yeah exactly and say well th- there are some demands about how we're gonna you know work with uh, the business mm. uh, going forward which which creates a whole new aspect of the business yeah uh, and for that we i think we are up to like a 400 uh, you know digital team of developers and you know mm. yeah. infrastructure guys and and it's and that's a totally new game yeah. for us, right? Mm. Yeah. So, so for us to learn that is this really important? All right. And oh yeah, it's important. It's mm. important. Yeah. Uh, is it's it coming? A, it's it, more it's and more. totally coming. Yeah. Uh, what kind of you know what kind of breed are, are these people? I yeah. mean, can we tr- can we get them into to you know to uh, to work out of uh, Funen? Right. Uh, sometimes tougher. Yeah. Uh, and and you know so we have to also have some of them in Copenhagen, but we would like to keep them in in Odense, which is which is where where that that stuff is supposed to be be built. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know all these kind of challenges, which is new to the business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, we you know the the, the news anchor is sitting there and it's all cooking. And we we never you know all fair. Yeah. All these kind of things, and we have to do the transition at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, so so. The, it's it's a big job. It's a big demand for it's a crazy business for mm. for, for yeah. a very proud uh, you know company who's done it well for for many many years, yeah. but also in a game where where things are changing and we have mm. to embrace it. Yeah, and you're state owned. Yeah, and we're on top owned. of that. Yeah, so it's like you have a lot of barriers or not barriers, but a lot of challenges like to do what you guys need to do. I think like because as a news media, you also are sort of bound by some governance there and what you can and cannot do and Absolutely. say and yeah. how you have to be and actually even how much data you can use. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you have to be a little bit, you know, secured in some ways. Yeah. Like you have to, you're protected in some ways by mm-hmm. also certain, you know, rights and mm-hmm. stuff. So I think there's something really interesting of your guys' business because it is like that aspect, then the technology aspect, then the content creation aspect, then like, it's, I don't envy you at all, man. <laughs> <laughs> I would just fall apart. Yeah. I would not be a good yeah. <laughs> leader. I'd be like, <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I don't know how to deal with all yeah. this. Yeah. So um, I'm going to watch Yule Kellen. I would yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids. Just Fantastic. wake me up for Yule Kellen there. Yeah. And I'll be, uh, <laughs> that's Christmas calendar for those of you listening. Yeah. Because uh, there's, man, there's a lot of challenges. So kudos to you for going down the path and and being uh, you know able to stick it out. It's, uh, it's no, uh, it's impressive. You know, it's it's it's, it's, impressive. it's, uh, it, it's, it's a balance act, right? Yeah. So, so the good thing, yes, we are state owned, but we are uh, we don't get money from the state. We have to make our own money. Okay. So so you know, so I, what's the point? <laughs> is that yeah, a good deal? What's yeah. the point? Yeah. Who, who signed the contract? No, it's, if I'm it's, not getting money from daddy, what the yeah. hell? Yeah. So so no, you know, it's a perfect deal from from the from the government, right? So yeah. they don't have to give us money, but they still have, you know, they put a lot of things and mm. you know criteria we have to meet. Uh, and for us, it it can it gives a it creates a purpose mm. for, for that business, which is super super great to have these days, also to attract. You know, a new talent, whether it's mm. developers or marketeers or editors or what it is, yeah. uh, you want to go to work in a place which actually has something, you know, create something meaningful. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you kind of say, well, you have the commercial aspect as being one, we have to make our own money. On the other hand, you got the purpose, which is the public service mm. uh, oh, yeah. lack. Uh, and you kind of that sweet spot if you it's not for you right Chris but it, it will be for me to say well we have to kind of I see it as we get the, the best out of both worlds yeah uh, where somebody may you know get paranoid and say well are we this or that but we're both and we have to balance that in you know the way we publish our content the way yeah. we do our marketing mm. uh, but it's also you know and also makes you guys unique I mean yeah, like it, 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 it's exactly and it attracts and the right talent because it is a unique yeah sort of business and and you you, you know for 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 if I then move, move it closer to myself and say so what is the attractive part of that is that you know we can do campaigns for strictly come dancing we can do Christmas campaign for the for that lovely calendar week we're gonna give you a great one this year yes yes so it's so more excited. it's more tinka and it's gonna be yes beautiful. More tinka. yeah 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 
It's gonna be beautiful. You, know, have, you don't have any clue what I'm talking see, about. I don't see. I don't see it, but I know it. I mean, okay. I've heard of it. Yeah, I went to the Tinker Tower this uh, summer. Oh, uh, did you? So, it's yes. beautiful. Yeah, it is nice. Very yeah. nice. Yeah, okay. you should go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so, so so yeah. ba basically, uh, you know, giving that position where you can, you know, make great content uh, marketing around a wonderful big, uh, you know, whether series mm. or entertainment yeah. shows, and on the other hand, you can do big campaigns around you know big things in in you know in the society yeah, in the world in the world yeah, and we say cultural well, change yeah exactly yeah. where it's more like all right so this is important this we mm -hmm. now we just want to yeah. create a conversation about yeah. climate or you know how we look at it and you guys can do it credibly which is really nice like, like yeah other we, organizations can't like exactly they, yeah so 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 it, it's it's quite hard for if you're 100 percent commercial and you mm. start talking about you know climate yeah. say well what to catch here yeah uh whereas for us well it's it's in our interest to actually you know give the danes some i mean create these conversations which the danes uh, mm. need to talk about yeah and we want them to talk about the climate we want to talk get them you know we had we had an incident in um in x factor uh last year which was some of the uh some of the the guys uh participating in in the song contest mm. they had a lot of abuse on social media Ah, yeah. uh, okay, yeah, that. Uh, so, so that created a lot of hype around. We we still see it, right? It's a, it's in the sports yeah. world. It's everywhere. Yeah, digital bullying. Yeah, and and you know, it it's we had a lot of of, of issues around mm. it in in X Factor, and we you know we had it in the programming where where we you know Addressed stood up it. for it and said, yeah. well, this is this is not okay. Mm. Uh, and on the on the um you know on the campaign side, we did uh, a few campaigns called hate messaging, mm -hmm. which was something which is not normally something you do as as you know in the commercial area, mm. yeah. uh, but you would do it as a business and and brand and say, well, you know, uh, this is not all right. Mm. So so think twice before you post stuff on social media. Yeah. yeah. And you know you know when you when you do these kind of things, you actually feel that that within the space I I operate in. That you create value in a different way, yeah. so so that is why I I love being in that sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. so it's a nice so, area. Uh, yeah, so yeah. so I, I gives think you meaning and gives you purpose. And exactly, and it also yeah. gives you the opportunity to do a wonderful World Cup campaign, hopefully in a few months, yeah. right? Uh, and uh, yeah, so the yeah. balance for me it works out really well. You can talk yeah. about World Cup, and you can talk about you know world right or equal rights, and you can talk about um, many cultural elements around World Cup. So you guys mm -hmm. have like many entrances into the different uh, things that you guys program yeah so i think that's that's a brilliant uh, thing to I, do. Think I think so. i think it's also what media companies need to do more of yeah i mean you mentioned about online bullying or, or messaging even disney has been sort of on some campaign trails sort of trying to get people to realize hey when we're putting out a show you know tone down the the sort of hateful hurtful comments towards yeah actors or producers or directors just because you don't like a show mm. like come on yeah. guys like be polite be nice like yeah. we're just trying to make some nice content for you yeah. yeah um so even them are like dealing with these sort of things and i think as a business i think you every business that i've seen so far has really been um trying to be a force for good Right, like trying to be even oil companies are like hey we should talk about the environment and you might disagree that like hey that's kind of double standard yeah that's a little bit talking out both sides of your mouth if you want to use that sort of <laughs> phrase um but i do think those that have a right to talk or or at least a place to talk about it are doing a great job and, and you guys are clearly mm -hmm. an example of that as well so i know yeah. you have a lot of experience in it but uh, speaking of like campaigns and purpose and impact what campaigns have you seen you know really create impact and what's you know your motivation and strategy behind when you guys start to ideate for for campaigns well when we, when we look at campaigns we obviously you know have different uh, kbis for mm. what we wanted to achieve so normally you would say on a regular campaign that you have to create subscriptions sales for for tv2 play you mm. have to you know create viewing uh, or at least uh, you know conversations around what we're doing so that's one part that's that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis most mm. of it um when we look at specific brand campaigns uh, and purpose campaigns, it's a it's a different game because in that aspect, it's more you know start big conversations about mm -hmm. you know obviously uh, big themes in life and also something which which you emotion. know emotions and what what you know 
conversations we want to be uh, you know, attached to uh, mm. as, as a business. Yeah, driving culture in some ways. Also right? that, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so the, the the best and biggest one we we've had on that one is is obviously the uh, the first version of the all that we share campaign, mm. which was done back in 2017, yeah. uh, around the time where the in- inauguration for for Donald Trump was made in the White House. Mm. Uh, so, timing. so timing was perfect. Mm. Yes, absolutely. You guys planned that, right? We planned it perfectly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good job. No. You so, knew ahead of time he would win. Yeah, like, exactly. Okay. No, no, that was a big news so, organization. They knew, right? I mean, I know it's not a CMO, uh, <laughs> you know, type saying that uh, it was a coincidence, but it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I would love to say it was proper planning, and but it, it was a coincidence that it, it happened there. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it was at the time where Bede Hotel, which is a huge series mm. in Denmark, was about to do the January launch, and that's a true story. So, okay. uh, but that campaign was was uh, you know created mm. such a big impact. Uh, it it's a campaign which is uh, which basically wants to to you know bring a conversation about that we have more together than we than we think. Yeah, more uh, in common. Mm. More in common than we think. Yeah, we're so, not as divided as, yeah. exactly, as we might think. Exactly. Yeah. And you know that that theme at that time, which was after a horrible year with uh, you know terror attacks in in a couple mm. of places in Europe. Uh, which was just, I mean, it was just what the world needed, mm. and and we were still waiting to see what what the the madman in the White House was mm. was going to do. So uh, so the timing was really with that campaign, yeah. but it was also you know, it was uh, it was a campaign which at that time uh, could still you know have super uh, attraction organically. Mm. Um, so so that one we stopped counting after it reached uh, 400 million views. So it's insane. it's insane, yeah. yeah, and and possibly one of the later on the the probably still the most you know award winning campaign ever made in this country, mm. uh, but it was also you know embraced and it was reposted uh, mm. by by you know uh, Justin Trudeau, the the Canadian Prime Minister. Yeah, uh, it it came on the El Engineer show. It was you know pushed by Richard Branson mm. and other celebrities and all other celebs. So it was basically supporting. all all the people you wanted you know who. You know, wanted to embrace it, mm. did it, yeah. and uh, yeah. So, I mean, if I wanted to point one out, mm. that's a one which I actually feel has has made the the you know the biggest difference, and it's been used in lots mm. of uh, you know education material. We still get lots of contacts about mm. whether they because it's a simple concept, right? Yeah. It's a yeah. super simple concept, so it's you can nice do it message. in this, you can do it in a schoolyard, you can do it, uh, you mm. know, at a Christmas dinner with your friends and all that stuff. So he's coming back to Christmas. With yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently uh, well, I do look like Santa, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah. So no, so that's if I got it, you know, pick one. Yeah, uh, that's a one because yeah. it, it had everything with it. Right. What did you uh, what did you guys have in mind when you created that concept? Was it like, OK, we need a TV2 as a strong sender of this message or what was going through is it just like upper funnel we need to create some general awareness and then it just blew up or what was the intent well it was totally upper funnel right yeah. uh, so but but what we wanted to because we have lots of conversations when when you look at our content and say well it's not really for me mm. uh, but what we wanted to kind of, of also say is that you know what uh, you know creating conversations around th- some of the themes we have in our uh, programming yeah like you know, you may not be a super fan of uh, strictly come dancing, mm. but you may love to dance. Yeah, uh, you may not like uh, you know uh, some of the you know soft reality shows we have where you you know farmers meet their their dating wives and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. Or baking or whatever. Exactly. So so, but you may love to bake. You may love to you know eat cake. L- yeah, eat cake. <laughs> That's also a good point. And date farmers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, but you may, you know, uh, hopefully we all, you know, kind of engage in love somehow, yeah. right? Mm. Uh, you know, and maybe that you don't uh, think that that person, that program is is perfect, but you know what? He or she talks about weather, with us also some of the conversations we have. Mm. You got news and basically showing that, that you may not, you know, identify yourself with exactly that person you see in that program, mm. but talk about the themes because yeah. it's a conversation we want to kind of bring to life. Mm. So, so, and it doesn't matter whether you are you're tall or you're you're not, mm. uh, whether you got that color yeah. skin or whatever you do. We 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 create conversations with the content we do and yeah. try to embrace that. Yeah, that's a good insight. It's also interesting yeah. for a television station to do their television network because I think, I mean, in terms of the evolution of media, 
we used to have much more common ground because the media landscape wasn't as fragmented, mm. right? You didn't have YouTube and Instagram and no. TikTok and and you didn't have 30 or 40 channels or 50 channels or a thousand channels that we have. So as a television program, I mean, our television station, traditionally what was on there was the commonality between yeah. everybody else in the world because we all saw the same shows and we all sat down on Friday night and watched that programming and, and you could be sure that 20%, 30% of the population saw it. But, and that's the commonality, yeah. right? And I think it's really interesting that you guys also, I think, I'm not sure that was the insight, but I think the insight that we are all the same is, is a part of that. But I also think like media contributes to that. Yeah. That we are all the same because we're all watching the same thing. Yeah, you're right. And yeah. nowadays it's a bit more up in the air about where that's gonna land because we're all seeing different things. And now there's a discussion about my truth is different than your truth, which is not how it was 30 or 40 years that's ago. Right. But I think it's an interesting, a super interesting insight. And I think it's, I think you guys are the are the best sender for that message because it is, you guys were such, you guys are a part of, of that commonality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Like you said, like, just because you don't like watching, you know, farmers date, find dates. dates. Yeah. I mean, there's something in there for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's right? a love story. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it is about a love story. Love, if yeah. you break it down, yeah. Yeah. and everybody can be on that train. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, where do you see? Uh, I want to end on the future outlook. So, where do you see the advertising marketing uh, going for the entertainment industry that TV two is in in the future? Well, I think I think uh, if we look at it from from the aspect of TV two, mm. I mean it's it's it will continue being. I mean, what we're really strong right now is that we still have flow TV, and and within those breaks between the programming, we got a lot of space to actually advertise for 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 the work we do. Mm. Um, so that is going to continue to be a big driver for us. So what we also learn is that. Uh, flow TV may not die entirely because mm. what when we look at the viewing on TV two play, that that still has the you know the live signal from yeah. the, from fr- from uh, from flow, mm. and it's massively viewed. Yeah. So so that's also you know I mean when when we talk about that we I try to to you know I, t- I try to compare it with when when you had Spotify the mm. first time and you were like. Yeah, now I'm gonna watch this uh, Guns N' Roses song from that was when I was studying, and you know, you put that one on, and then you did that for a few months, uh, and eventually you get a little bit tired of you know picking the next song all the time and putting it up in a in a queue, mm. and eventually you're starting watching playlists, yeah, uh, watching listening to playlists, mm. right, and you know, Flow TV is a playlist, yeah, we call them playlists, oh, okay. so so it's it's some somebody is curating your content for you. Mm. But you know it's within this genre, genre. Yeah. So it's it may be lifestyle, of it may course. be sports, it may be you know different stuff. Documentary, whatever. Exactly, and you know what? I think Fl- Flow is going to have a great life going forward because mm-hmm. the convenience you have. Uh, so so it's it's a lot of the viewing. I'm mm-hmm. saying a lot on TV two play is still yeah. is, is there. Yeah. And yeah. we're kind of astonished to see. All right, so there's actually still a huge demand for mm-hmm. you know please entertain me. Yeah. yeah. But when I look at my own behavior on Spotify, I say, mm. yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Because I don't bother to sit and pick the next song yeah. all the no. time. Uh, but I may be in a mood when I'm out running doing this or when I sit back home doing this, when I'm with my kids here, I drive there. And, and you know, I create- Go to different channels exactly. for whatever. Yeah. yeah. So Makes so uh, so so from from that part of it, it's going to remain the same. Mm. But what we, what we do have to adapt to when it comes to TV2 is that we're going to lose out on a lot of our contacts, which we have in the old system, mm. in our old ecosystem. So we need to find these audiences elsewhere. Yeah. And that will be within social platforms. That mm. will be, you know, out in the streets doing great outdoor campaigns. That's going to be the more traditional way. Yeah. But we still have to find the right mix and blend it mm. with all the assets we have in house. Yeah. Uh, and and try to get the best out of that. Mm. Yeah, very cool. I still I I think that you're spot on like Flow TV a lot of people would say like it's dead or it's that, but it's not. No. I think people it's, said a lot that it would die because Netflix came and it's, whatever. But, it's really but not. It's and I think that there is something extremely interesting about Flow TV that I found and maybe you guys have found as well. And maybe you've already used it in a campaign or something. But like, so this summer I was, we were camp, not camping, we were sort of summer housing with my kids and we did not have Netflix. We did not have TV2 Play. We did not have Disney Plus. We just had Flow TV. Yeah, and the removal of all friction yeah. 
when it came to what we were watching (laughs) was a blessing. Yeah. I am telling you people, if you want peace in your household, get flow, get yeah. flow TV because you don't have an argument about what you're watching. Yeah, thanks, Chris. It yeah. is simply yeah. just put it on. <laughs> Whatever comes on, comes on, kids and wife and yeah. <laughs> husband and maybe two husbands or whatever your family, you know, constellation is. But I think it was insanely awesome. Yeah, because it was just. That's that's the show. That's yeah. what's coming next. Yeah. I don't know. I don't care. Yeah. But we're gonna watch it. Yeah. And there was no discussion. Mm. It was just there. It is. And the amount of you know complaints went to zero. Yeah. And I think that's that's a campaign for you right there. Yeah. 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 You can have yeah. that one. Yeah. Because I do believe like it yeah. is. If you want peace in your household, yeah. get Flow TV. Yeah. I'm gonna do that campaign, and you can yeah. bill me for it afterwards. No, no. <laughs> It's yours for free. Yeah. Just come back on the podcast yeah. we'll do once you've launched it and yeah. be like, yeah, that was a great, or yeah. th- th- don't, I don't want to take credit until yeah. it runs. <laughs> and then you're like, if it does shit, then I'm like, yeah. I'll take uh, credit. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you can so, happily be the talent. You know, you can cast him for, yeah. for that commercial. Yeah, exactly. I'll be the dad. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sounds good. Or I'll be the kid, whatever you want. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for sharing. And here you have it, a digital transformation over the years from uh, TV2 and a bit about Jacob's career. Thank you guys for tuning in and thank you see so you much. for the next thank one. You. See Bye. You. This has been the Social Media Sucks Podcast.